Well, here we are again, folks. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So glad to be with you today. Listen, we're going to look in the book of Colossians. They are called Colossians because they lived in a town called Colossae. And the doctrine of Christ is what we're going to talk about, is what they were delivered, the doctrine of Christ and the doctrines of the church. The uh, practical Christianity that you're going to see these people live is uh, the uh, dramatic life of a believer. And it was in Colossae. They, they were dramatic. They knew what to pray for. They knew what to pray for. When they prayed for something, they prayed for something spiritual. They didn't pray for a new, a new camel or a, a, a new donkey or a new saddle. They prayed for something that was spiritual. And they could have prayed for all those other things, a new donkey or a new camel. It's like us today, uh, we think we need a, uh, if we need a car, we need a new one uh, rather than an old one that would work. But let's look at the first. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, the will of God to Timotheus, our brother, and to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the fact that Timothy was there. I love the fact that Timothy was there. Timothy was a spiritual young man. He was a man that had some spirit about him. He had so much spirit about him that Paul at times sent him like to Philippi with a letter. And that letter he said, you receive Timothy just like you would me. You receive my son, Timothy. He's my son in the Lord. Now, he's not my physical son, but he is my son, one of my firstborn in the Lord. So, here we are. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Paul said this in many of his uh, prison epistles, that he thanked the Father for these people. And since we heard of your faith, wow in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Wow! This was a loving church. This was a church that loved all of the saints. And do you know what? Our preacher is building on right now the love of the missionaries that we have around the world. Some 90 missionaries, 105 missionaries, whatever it is we have. And he's building on that love that love for them, increasing their, their what we give them, uh, personally writing a letter from individuals in the church saying we see how your work is going, we see your missionary letter and we're interested in you and we're praying for you and because of that, um, because of that we are doing things for you. And so, uh, here we are, back in the book. <laughs> My phone drove me crazy for a minute there. For the hope which is laid out for you in heaven, wherefore, whereof, excuse me, ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you, as it is in all the world, and bring forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and know the grace of God in truth. As ye also learn of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Wow! Your love in the Spirit. Here's a man that left them. He came to Paul and he expounded to Paul what is happening at Colossae. And he said, man, you ought to be Paul when you get back down here. You're not going to believe it. That church is on fire. They, are, they know how to pray the Holy Spirit down. They know how to live a Christian life separated from the world, separated from the things of the world. They, know, they have learned how to worship God through Jesus Christ. For this cause, we also, uh, uh, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray 
for you <laughs> and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Wow. They didn't pray that he'd get delivered out of jail. They prayed that he would be filled with the Spirit. And he was. Paul was filled with the Spirit. I can't help but believe that Paul took a college course every single time he went to a prison, he was taking a college course. And not only that, God made it to where those people in the prison provided him with a pen and paper and ink and the parchment providing him with what to write and, and how to do it. I mean, hey, he had everything delivered to him. Why? First thing he did is won the jailer to the Lord. And the jailer couldn't help but say, well, man, I'm a Christian now. I'm your brother and Lord now. What do you need? I'll get it for you. All right. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Wow! Patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Has Paul saying, hey, I'm, I'm in the prison, but I'm, I've got patience and I've got long suffering. And I'll be honest with you, truthfully, as long as my mind stayed on Jesus, as long as I'm working with one of these other fellows that are beside me, or one of these jailers that I'm chained to, or I'm working on one of them, I'm in perfect peace. Yes, I'm behind bars, so what? I'm in perfect peace, I'm where God wants me. I could be out on the street doing the same thing, but right here I'm doing what's necessary in this prison. And giving thanks unto our Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. When that word meet is used, that word is a strong, strong word that uh, you are the food, the spiritual food for a hungry world searching for spiritual food. And you've got the food you can lay out on the table to them, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now Paul lived in the kingdom of his son even when he was behind bars. He lived in the kingdom of God. His life in the morning when he got up and the dew was on him and it was cold and chilly and he had to shake it off and start walking to get warmed up uh, before the day started. He knew that his redemption, verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature the firstborn of every creature was the son of God Jesus he was with the father in the beginning he said nothing that was made was made without me everything that was made was made with me for by him we all things created that all in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers all things were created by him and for him talking about jesus christ all things were created by him and for him he was the third part of the trinity of the fatherhead there was god the father god the son and god the holy ghost and the Son of God came up, walked on the earth. The Holy Ghost could not come and be our mission until the Holy Ghost came with Jesus, was present with Him as one entity, and parts of the Holy Spirit at times would fall upon people, like in the upper room, and Jesus had to go to the uh, grave in order for the Holy Spirit to come and live in everybody on mission all at one time everybody could have the Holy Spirit and he is before all things and by him all things consist and he is the head of the body of the church who is the beginning the first fruit from the dead 
that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of the cross, made peace through the blood of his cross, by him, to reconcile all things unto him, by him, I say, whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Wow! And we are reconciled by the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight before God. Jesus presents every one of us, you and I, who have asked Jesus to forgive us of our sin, he presents us to God unblameable. And that's how he does it. That's his commission. That's his duty. He said, Who now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. There in, in Paul's little life and in our little life, we have different dispensations. I am in a dispensation of being evangelist in the church that I'm in. I am a teacher, preacher. I am a teacher, preacher. I do not preach as, uh, per se. I teach. And as I teach, it becomes uh, somewhat uh, a little dramatic sometimes. It becomes preaching. But most of the time, it's teaching. And uh, even the ministry, which it had, was hid from the ages and for generations, but now is made manifest unto the saints. That's you and I. The mystery that was hid and made. The Old Testament law. The Old Testament saints. The Old Testament way. Uh, to whom God would make known that is the riches and the glory of his ministry among the Gentiles which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ in you. Jesus said say, say I did th at the age of 30, 2 o'clock in the morning, um, November 5th, 1972. I looked up in heaven and I said, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. Jesus came into my heart, into my life, and has been in there ever since. Have I grieved him before? Yes, I have. Have I grieved him many times? Yes, I have. I try not to grieve the very Lord that I am sealed by until the day of redemption. I don't want to be a blinking light before God. I don't want to be a, a light one minute and blinking the next. I want to be a permanent light before God. When I stand in that reflective mirror that God has before Him, that when you get saved, you become a uh, in that reflected mirror and you become a little spot of light. I want that light to be permanent light, not a blinking light. And I want it to be there. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that uh, we may present every man perfect. We may present every man perfect. Wow. Perfect in Christ Jesus. Wow. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me, which worketh in me mightily. <laughs> hey, Paul said, he has to work in me mightily. Hey, I got news for you. He has to work in me mightily. I'm a finite being, and God has to work in me mightily to pull out what he has for me, what he's put in me. Over 40 years, he's put stuff in me, and now he's pulling it out. He's pulling it out. He wants me to teach it. He wants me to pass it on. He wants me to do what I'm doing. And I know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. 
because I couldn't do it without his power. I couldn't do it without his presence. I couldn't do it without his perfection. I couldn't do it without his uh, preeminence, without his persona, uh, without his uh, everything that starts with P that would relate to God, uh, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Verse 28. There's my verse right there. That's me. Right there. Teaching, warning, and preaching. Teaching, warning, preaching. What? In wisdom. All wisdom of God. Not my wisdom. Not the wisdom of man. But the wisdom of God from this book. This book, if you please, is Jesus Christ with us, in us, and with us. To whom God would make known the riches of the glory of the ministry among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. A Gentile. I'm not a Jew. I'm not from the seed of Abraham. And because of that, I'm not considered in the Old Testament, right, as one of the chosen ones. But when Jesus went to the cross, he made me one of the chosen ones. And where also he said, I labor, striving according to his work, which is worketh in me mighty. Now let me tell you something. Paul said that several times in here. That I'm striving. That I'm striving. That I'm striving. That I'm striving. He's striving for that. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them of Laodicea and for many as have not seen my face in the flesh. There was many people Paul wanted to see. He wanted to get there. He couldn't get there. He couldn't make his rounds fast enough to get to where he wanted to get so that there was those that hadn't seen his face yet. They heard of him. They heard of this Saul that was killing the Christians and how he got saved and how he was on the track. Boy, he was on the way. He was doing now just as strong and rich and hard as he was killing people, he's winning them to the Lord now. And so, uh, and he said that their hearts might be uh, comforted, being uh, knit together in love and under all riches of full assurance of the understanding of the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father, Jesus Christ, in whom I hid all the treasures of of wisdom and knowledge. Let me tell you a little secret. You've got to get in the Bible. You've got to get in God's Bible. You want to know the mystery? This whole book of Colossians is about the mystery of Jesus Christ. Let me show you some things they had right here. Hey, they had faith in Jesus Christ, verse 4 in chapter 1. They had love for the saints, verse 4 in chapter 1. They had hope of eternal life and that's in 5 and in Titus 1 and 2. They had uh, they had heard the truth of the gospel and believed it. They heard it and believed it and, and experienced fruit bearing because they believed it. They bared fruit. They bared other Christians that came along and they bared the fruit of long suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperance, all of those five things that are listed in the fruit of the Spirit. And they knew the grace of God in truth. Wow. And look. And they were filled with wisdom. They were filled with understanding. They were walking worthy of the Lord. They were walking pleasing to the Lord. They were walking faithful in good works. They were walking in increasing the knowledge of God. They were strengthened with the might of God. Uh, they had His glorious power in their life. Wow. Uh, all the patience that they had. They had the long suffering, verse 11 and so, and they had joy. Wow. Do you know joy and happiness are two different things? Did you know that happiness is not joy? Joy does not leave. Joy passeth all understanding. Joy passeth happiness. Joy is makes you have joy when unhappiness is around. <laughs> And you have joy down in. That's why you could go to jail. I could go to jail today. 
And on my way there, I try to win the policeman. By the way, when a policeman stops me for any reason, a warning, or just to say, hey, Pete, how you doing, or whatever, I take a track out, and I give it to him. And ask him, if you die right now, sir, would you go to heaven? And a lot of times I get the answer, yes. And a lot of times I get the answer, no. I say, if you say no, you better keep two flak jackets on. Because you're in danger of hellfire. So, uh, we, we warn people and we tell people, and that's what we're supposed to do. He said, beware lest any man spoil you through vain philosophy. That's something that's not real. That's out of the Bible. If somebody talks to you about this book or that book or this thing or that thing, and they're not coming to you with a King James Version Bible, tell them you just, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm just not interested. I'm just not interested. I have what I need right in front of me that fills my heart, and I have the principalities and the power in my life of Jesus Christ, in whom also uh, ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. When I said November 5th, 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, I cut off the sin that I had following me. The degradation, the desire to commit suicide left me. The desire to quit, commit suicide left me. I uh, cut it all off. I was circumcised of all of those old fruits, all that old stuff. And it left me, and I've been circumcised from it every day since, free from that sin. And I have sinned the sense in, and I have said, Father, forgive me of that sin, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, help me not to do that again. In whom also ye are circumcised, okay, bruised with him in baptism, wow, buried with him in baptism, wow. That's a picture when I got saved, I went down to the church, I said, I want believers baptism buried in the water raised to walk in newness of life showing the picture that I was buried with him and raised to walk in newness of life wow man that is something else right there and and you being dead in your sins and in your uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you of all trespasses how did he quicken us? Forgave us of all trespasses, all our past sins, and all the sins that would ever be in our life, he has forgiven us already. When we do commit one of those things, we need to say, God, forgive me. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contemporary, cont contrary for, to contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, and made a show of them openly, triumphed over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect, or a holiday, or of any new moon, or of the Sabbath day, which are the shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Remember, everything up to the cross was a shadow of what's to come. And the way you put that shadow away in the Old Testament, you had to shed the blood of a goat or an animal or, or something, a sheep, turtle dove, uh, uh, even down to a sparrow. If you were definitely, definitely poor, so poor you couldn't get anything to sacrifice, you had to trap a sparrow and give that sparrow back to God, shed his blood. There again, I have the uh, awareness and the premonition that God was pleased with pure blood. And the bird has pure blood in it. It has not strayed from its way as Adam did. When God made the bird, he put the pure blood in that bird. And that bird has not strayed from that pure blood, still has it. Therefore, God could accept it as a sacrifice. The blood of a turtle dove, the blood of a lamb or a goat, the blood that God put on this earth that he used, that he put, the blood is the life of the flesh. And the blood that God put in was perfect blood, pure blood. It was from his basin. 
where Jesus went up and spread on the mercy seat that blood and put his blood in that basin, back in that basin. God has a basin full of blood that uh, the animals were have that blood in them too, as you and I did. And set your affections on the things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead to your life and hid with Christ. I'm dead to the life of alcohol. I'm dead to the life of card playing, poker playing. I'm dead to the life of rolling dice. I'm dead to the life of cussing, drinking, barroom stuff, trash. My poop table has trash. I'm, I'm dead to that. I am now raised in a newness of life. A life that is in newness. And it's come in newness. And therefore I've got to mortify the deeds and the members of my body. Which are upon this earth. I've got to not do fornication. Uh, or be involved in uncleanliness, or be incontinent, or be affectionate with evil, uh, concupiscence, or covetousness, or idolatry. For these things, the sake, the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Those are the things that bring the wrath of God. I, I, I work around people all the time, and I'm out on the job, and I'm working around people that can't pray to God. They can't call on God. And therefore they have miserable, hard days. Cussing and swearing and throwing hammers and saws and doing all kinds of things because they can't call on God. Uh, when I'm out there painting and I'm working and I have a serious problem with a piece of my equipment, I pray. I say, Lord, I'm having a serious problem with this piece of equipment. Now I'm not going to take a hammer and beat it up and ruin it and throw it in the trash and have to go get another one. I'm going to ask you to help me out. And I crank that thing up and I put it in gear and I go to work. And you know what? As a general rule, the prayer is answered immediately. And things go good. <laughs> Seek those things which are above. Seek the things that are affectionate. Verse 1, verse 2. Modify all the sinful members of your body and the deeds of your body. Put off the old man. Put on the new man. Forbear all men. Forgive all men. Uh, put on divine love. Uh, let the peace uh, impair the life. Or bring up your life and make it pure. Know, uh, know the Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15 Know the Bible. Study to show thyself approved. A workman need not to be uh, uh, ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hey, if I didn't, if I was a Christian, and I didn't know my Bible better than some people who are carpenters or mechanics or painters know what they're doing, I would not be very comfortable. You got to be. If you're going to work around a group of people that know what they're doing, and you don't know what they're doing, you're not going to be comfortable. You need to learn what the Bible said. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, there is neither circumcision or uncircumcision, there is neither barbarian, Scythian, born or free. But Christ is all in all. He's, he's in the born man, the free man, the Scythian, the barbarian. He's in everybody that ask him, he will come into and sup with them and they with him. Put on, therefore, the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye forgive them. <laughs> I forgive you, bro. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you dander up. <laughs> I don't know what it was I did, but I see that you're upset. Tell me what it was. And if you tell me what it was, say, hey, I won't do that again. I won't say that again. I didn't realize that offended you. Let's get this thing straight so we can walk circumspectly beside each other as brothers and get this thing behind us. I can't go home and sleep tonight if you've got something against me. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. The bond of perfectness is love, charity, love. Put that on first. Jesus didn't ask a guy that came to him and said, Will you heal my centurion, uh, my uh, 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 person, the centurion that came? He said, Will you heal my, 
my man. He didn't say, well, look, centurion, I looked down in your life and you got this sin and that sin and you did this and you did that and you did this. Why should I do that for you? No, he didn't do that. He said, yeah, I'll come over there and heal him. The centurion said, wait a minute now. I have men that work for me and I say, go do this and go do that and they do it. And so all you have to do is say it. You say the word and he'll be healed. Wow. And Jesus said, I have not seen greater faith in all the world. That's in John 9, 10. And uh, so, and then over in Mark 6, 6 is the same story again. Uh, wife, submit yourself unto your husbands. And here again, we went all through this same exact thing in Ephesians just a little while ago. We went through it in Philippians just a little while ago. Here it is a third time that Paul has taught a group of people about wives being subject unto their husbands and husbands loving their wives. A wife's not going to mind to be under subjection to a husband who's loving. If the husband's a loving, gentle, peaceful, doing right, loving his wife, doing right for her, doing right in the church, doing right for the children, doing right in the house, the woman's going to want to do everything that he asks or desires. And by the way, he's going to want to do everything she asks or desires. It's not a chore, woman, to be subject unto your husband. It is a blessing, and it will draw you a blessing from him. Servants, obey your masters. He's saying, if you're a servant, obey your master according to the flesh. Be not uh, 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 man pleases, but be in the singleness of heart. And then, who, uh, whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men. What I do, I do heartily as unto the Lord. I paint houses. We're painting a house right now. I'm painting it as unto the Lord. When I get done, it's going to be as perfect as a human being can get it. It's going to be the best that I can possibly achieve. And if the man finds any little thing, any little thing and says, well, I don't particularly like this speck. We're going to get that speck. And we're going to do it in love and in kindness. And we're going to do it in gentleness and meekness. And we're not going to rebel against something that we have a speck. If there's a speck there, it's my speck. And I need to take care of it. And whatsoever you need to do, do it heartily. Knowing that our Lord, ye shall receive the reward and the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord God. By the way. I can paint a man's house and do it the best I can possibly do it and have a reward in heaven for it. How about that? How about that? But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect for that person or for him or persons. So, wow. I mean, wrong is wrong, right is right. If you do right, you're going to get blessed for it. And if you do wrong, you're going to get cursed for it. Uh, masters, Give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Wow. Back in that day, there were servants. It wouldn't be a bad thing to have servants today. I am a servant of Jesus Christ, and he gives me everything I need. A roof over my head, food in my refrigerator, and he gives me everything I need, and I'm his servant. And if I had a servant, I would do the exact same thing for him. What would he like? He wouldn't like anything. If he needed spending money, I'd give him spending money, chain. If he needed something, I would make sure that he had it. If he had a roof over his head, a bed to sleep in, a bathroom to use, a kitchen to cook in, and, and food on the table, and a few pennies in his pocket, what more would he need? He would need no more. So he's saying, it's not wrong. For you to have servants, but treat them right. But continue in prayer, watching in the same with thanksgiving. And he said, All my state shall uh, take to declare a faithful minister and a fellow servant of the Lord. This uh, Tychicus is he was Paul was going to send us a letter over there to them, and he was going to be Paul. Always picked out an honest, a pure man, a man that had asked Jesus to forgive him. He might have been a murderer before. He might have been a thief, a cheater still. He might have been like me. Just exactly like me. But now he can be trusted because he's God's man. 
and Paul sending him over there. And Onesimus, Onesimus, a faithful, beloved brother, who is one of you, uh, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. They're going to tell these guys in Colossae about what's happening where Paul is. Now, in the closing instructions, Paul says, I salute you, brother, which are at Laodicea and Naphos and the church which is in thy house. And when this epistle is read among you, uh, cause that it be read also to the church of Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. And they to Acropius take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it. He's saying, you take this letter I'm writing you, and I really have bragged on you, and I have said all these things that you have in you and you do. You continue to do them. And you add to that virtue. You add to that love and the kindness. And he said, the salutation by the hand of me, Paul, remember my bonds, grace be with you. Amen. Paul scribed this himself. He said, with his own hand, he penned these four little chapters. With his own hand, he sat down and penned them. If I can read them in 19 minutes, Paul could have wrote them in 35 or 40 minutes. My father used to write letters like these four chapters right here. My dad used to write a nine-page letter to somebody on both sides in small writing. Do, 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 do. And he would write for 35 or 40 minutes and package it up and it cost three stamps to send it. It was so much in the letter. Uh, this was written from Rome in A.D. and it was sent to Ephesus by Philemon by uh, Tychicus, Tychicus. And uh, we had to see the summary of Paul to find out exactly where he was held at this time. And he was free from the law of the Old Testament and he had come to that place and we have gone seven minutes and some seconds over our time now I'm going to call it a day right here we'll see you next time this is brother Peter with tidbits from the word remember if it's not a godly day it's not a good day see you next time bye bye